rejoice in the Lord, I say again, rejoice. How do you do that? By being aware of what he's done for you. So I thank God for that. Another year. Um, I think we covered all the bases. Um, once we give you the signal, we'll get ready to go online and hear the word. We would like to greet our online visitors as well as our radio broadcast by saying grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to present to you the pastor and founder, Archbishop Keith T. Jenkins. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Amen. Now let's give Jesus a great hand. Come on. Come on, shout to God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Lord, we bless you, we glorify you, and we give you honor. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God. What a fantastic day it is. I want to also ask that you remember our brothers and sisters um, throughout the world that we connect with, the people in Jamaica, the people in Costa Rica, the people in South Africa, people in Kenya, that God would bless them. Let's keep praying for Sister Chanifon that the Lord would continue to strengthen her body and bless her. And I'm so glad, Brother Charles, what a, what a faithful man. May God bless you. If the Bible is right and the man of God has the ability to speak blessings on people, only if the Bible is right. I speak a blessing on you, man, that God would bless you and your family in a supernatural way. He's already blessed, but I pray that he would give you your heart's desire because of your faithfulness. His family, his kids were sick this week at the hospital, and he still made it out with his wife recovering. He's still faithful at his post. Let's give God a hand for this man of God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're privileged to have guests here. You know, we're in Minnesota. It's not like you can just run through Chicago or Indiana or St. Louis coming from somewhere else and meet people. You have to kind of go out of the beaten path to come up here to see us in Minneapolis. And the Lord would just have it that these wonderful people, both pastors of churches down in um, Mayfield, Kentucky, but they are originally from East St. Louis, Illinois. And if I tell you, trust me, everywhere we went, I mean, literally, everywhere we went, we ran into people from East St. Louis, St. Louis. We ran into Curtis Mayfield's son. He's coming to church. Oh yeah. We with he was he was real receptive to us. I mean, he got my number and he's you gonna see me and oh my. I said, who you who you say your dad was? We used to listen to Curtis Mayfield. That was on the other side, you know. But he he these we witnessed and we fellowshiped, and I said maybe God is trying to you know color purple trying to tell you something. <laughs> but. Um, I know the church is in Cahokia or Centerville, House of Prayer to All Nations is where they, where they started out. They're under uh, the Honorable Bishop uh, Bela of Higher Ground Ministries, which we know his father and know him as well. And they're with that fellowship, that organization. But God just had it fit for them to be here with us yeah. this whole week and just hang out with us and we get a chance to connect and fellowship. Amen. I want you to receive um, uh, Sister Candice, she's going to come. Women's come first, right? And she's just going to greet you. Now, she may seem shy, but these people know holiness. Now, ain't no church. I'm having to come up here and help us. <laughs> come on up, Sister Candice. And just give us a testimony from the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Is it on? Let's see here. And there should be power. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I heard everybody say grace and peace. So grace and peace, amen, to everybody this morning. We are excited, amen, to be here this morning, amen, in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It, this is, it wasn't a, a planned uh, trip for us to be here. Uh, my husband, uh, he works 
Uh, he's a truck driver, and we're out weekly, sometimes you know, three, four, five days. So he had a load to deliver here in Minnesota. And right when we got here, and right when he got to the place where he had to deliver, the engine lights come on on the vehicle, and he had to pull over, and it was at night, and he raised the hood, and he had oil all over the engine. And I was like, oh, my God. But anyhow, the Lord blessed us. He was able to drop the load that he had, and he had to get his truck towed. And so we had to, of course, get into a hotel. And that was on Wednesday, week before last. Yeah, on Wednesday. And so I told my husband, I said, who do we know in Minnesota? <laughs> Do we have any relatives in Minnesota? And lo and behold, he remembered, amen, Archbishop, amen, uh, Jenkins and his wife. Amen. So he got in contact with them. And oh, my God, I don't know what to say, Pastor. I really don't. I mean, they have been there for us, y'all. They have treated us, I'm telling you, like royalty. You know, and I give God praise. Amen. Bishop came and picked us up, took us out to eat. I'm talking about to a nice restaurant. Do you hear me? Amen. Not a fast food, amen, place, which was fine with us, you know, but he, he really took care of us. And I thank God for his precious wife. Amen. She has been such a blessing. And I was thinking of her, amen, on this morning as I was getting ready. Amen. We've met a lot of bishops, wives, a lot of bishops, you know, in the organization and, and, and around the world. And, and I said, I thank the Lord for her humbleness, her spirit. You know, because some wives, I'm telling you, you run into, they're arrogant, you know, as, as they're up there and you're down here. Not this woman of God. Amen. I just, I'm telling you, I just hooked arm with, arms with her. She's a very sweet lady. And so I thank God for her. And also, you know, we got to, real quickly, got to talking about family and everything. And I was sharing some things with her regarding my girls. We have three girls, ages 25, 27, and 29. And we have three beautiful grandsons. But, you, but, you know, my two youngest, they're, you know, kind of swayed away from the Lord. And, but I can see my middle child, she, she's, the Lord is dealing with her heart. And as we were sitting there this morning, Sister said, I mean, like lady says, I'm praying for your family. Not no, I check my phone after Sunday school. I got a phone call from my middle child. So I said, let me go and, and get this call and see what it's all about. She said, Mom, she said, are you guys having church this morning? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. She said, y'all having church this morning? I said, well, baby, we're still in Minnesota. She said, okay, I didn't know because I was coming to church. Y'all, come on, give God some glory. She said, I was coming to church this morning. Oh, glory! Come on! Y'all, I'm trying to keep this thing together. Amen, I thank God, amen, even for the worship on this morning. Oh, my God, Bishop. Oh, that worship was awesome. I said, oh, I wish I could take y'all with me. Oh, hallelujah. My bitch ain't going to let y'all come, though. Amen, hallelujah. But I thank God for this place. I mean, you all have been beautiful to us on Wednesday night. You guys came up and you greeted us. You hugged us. You loved on us. And I needed a hug. One of the mothers, amen, hallelujah, gave me a great big hug and began to pray for me. We have a mother of our church, and she comes and she hugs us and she encourages us. I needed that mother. Hallelujah. She hugged me and she prayed for me. Amen. So I really thank God for you and all you all, amen, that are praying for us and gave us a word of encouragement. Amen. Continue to pray for us. Amen. Keep us before the Lord. Amen. And we will, you, we will be back. I'm telling you, and it's going to be a vacation next time, Bishop. Amen. We will be back. Amen. God bless you. Let's give Pastor Candace Hurd a great hand praise. Amen. I would like for Pastor Hurd, his father's Bishop Hurd, I keep calling him Bishop, but this is Pastor uh, George Hurd, the G second, there you go, all right, he's going to come and greet you, <laughs> hallelujah, praise the Lord, <laughs> praise the Lord, saints, come on, hallelujah, he's worthy to be praised. Sunday, Ruta ta 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 ka. Woo! Jesus in the building today. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Let me. Okay, let me bring it in. Woo! Shaba ba 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 ba. God is good. Hallelujah! I feel Him in the house. 
If y'all ain't got the Holy Ghost, amen, this is your opportunity right now. Say, God, come on in and feel me. He's in the house. Hallelujah. Now understand why. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Woo. See, I, I had a mechanical breakdown. Now I'm having the Holy Ghost break out. Hallelujah. How about my Sunday? Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. He's good, saints. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm not strange. I'm just special. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank God for, amen, Archbishop. Amen, Keith Jenkins. The elect and only lady. Amen, Lady Jenkins. Thank God for you as well. Amen. Been truly a blessing to us on this week. Sometimes... As pastors, man, we pour ourselves out all the time. And uh, I know you've asked it many times like I have. God, when am I going to be poured back into? Amen. I've always promised him one of these days. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to come to Minnesota and we're going to spend some time with you. Amen. This was unexpected, but glory, it was on purpose and with purpose. Hallelujah. Hearing all the wonderful testimonies. I know God's in the midst of something great. Amen. I want you, I, I, I'm like the, the, the apostles. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Amen. That you get in, amen, to what, uh, what God is doing. Get into the move, amen, of what God's doing. Amen. He's increasing, amen, his people. He's expanding his kingdom inside his people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anybody want more? If see, we like me, Glory, I, I know it's got to be something more than what I've experienced. God, I want more today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's God, I just want to be poured into today. I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't come with any uh, special intentions, things of that nature. I, I'm one of those that learned uh, to listen. Amen to the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Because God is speaking. We don't have to do all the talking, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got somebody that said this in Sunday school. We got two ears. Uh, we should be listening more than we do in the talking. Amen. And I don't want it to be me. I want it to be the spirit of the Lord that's doing the speaking. Amen. And he's been uh, working with us and speaking with us. Amen. All week long. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. He gave me two words that had just been bubbling over inside of me. Because uh, I know that there are uh, many of us, I mean, we're going through hard times, difficult times. Things are changing. Shifts are being made. Sometimes uh, you wonder yourself, well, are we going to make it? Amen. Behind uh, COVID and, and the other difficulties and things that we're dealing with. But he gave me two words that just been burning inside of me, and it was just be encouraged. <laughs> be encouraged no matter what's going on. Hallelujah. Be encouraged. Amen. Because he's going to strengthen you. Amen. He's going to increase you. He says, but you got to do something yourself. You're going to have to stand. What I want, sister, Ed, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Amen. You got to stick and stay. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I got to talk to some individuals here in the church and I never meet a stranger, but I, every time I meet somebody, I mean, I lock in because I'm listening to you. I want to hear what you have to say. And just listening to uh, the, the members of the church. I said, God, I said, this is what we need. We need more people like this are willing to get behind the man of God, stick and stay with what God's doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But I want you guys just to be encouraged. Amen. So stop looking for your help from without. You got the Holy Ghost now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You won with God. Now stop looking for your help from without and start to go down within. Hallelujah. And pull up on that power that God's placed on the inside of you. You've been empowered. You've been equipped. Amen. For such a time as this. I want you to go forth. Amen. And know that God is with you. Amen. Be blessed and be encouraged. Let's give Pastor Hurd a great hand. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. All right. We're good to go. Good to go. I want you to bow your heads with me. We're going to get into the Word of God. And uh, I'm going to share with you something the Lord put in my heart. And then we're going to let you go home. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your manifold blessings. There's no other God besides you. You are true. You are good. And you're always good. 
Lord, we ask that you remember your servant now. Touch his mind and give him clarity of thought. Touch his lips and give him precision of expression. Touch his body. Give him the strength to preach your word. Above all, Jesus, we ask that you would anoint him, for it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. Make this spirit true to the hermeneutics of the text. Bend this will that it will be subject to your will. Charge this atmosphere with power. Let there be an alarm sound for sinners. Lord, let your people be edified. Your name glorified. Help us, Father, to build a bridge from the ancient scriptures to those that are sitting here in the pews. Thank you for the angels that stand beside us to give us what to say. We take absolute control, absolute authority over this service. We bind demonic forces, every shape, every form, and every fashion. And we thank you for the angels of God that is encamped all around about us and in this place. Now, Lord, as we go into your word, glorify thine own self. Make your word clear. Make it simple. Make the preaching irresistible. That the gainsayer won't be able to resist it. And send your word to where you want it to go. It will not come back void. All of these merits we beg in the name of he who lie down in the grave and rose triumphantly the third day. Jesus Christ our Lord and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be coming from the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter number four. But we'll start reading Nehemiah chapter number 1, verse 1 through 3, then we'll go to chapter 4, 1 through 3, and then 19 through 21. Nehemiah chapter number 1, verse 1 through 3, here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. Let's read, class. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hajakaliah, the son, and it came to pass in the month of Chesilu, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace, that Hanah and one of my brethren came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. Verse 3. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left, the remnant that are left, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The walls of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire. The walls of Jerusalem are broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire. The walls are broken down and the gates are burned with fire. Chapter number four, verse one. And it came to pass that while Samballot heard that we build the wall, he was upset, he was angry, he was mad, incensed, he was indignant he was wroth and he took great indignation and look what he did Satan never changed his plans he mocked the people of God verse 3 verse 2 I'm sorry and he spake before his brethren and said brethren and the army of Samaria and said what do these feeble Jews Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbles which are burned? Remember, the walls are down 
and the gates are burned with fire. Now Tobiah, the Ammonite, was by him and said, even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone walls. Jump down to verse 18 of that same chapter. For the builders, everyone had a sword girded by his side, and so build. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. Verse 19. And I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, the work is great and large. The work is great and it's big and it's large. And we are separated upon the wall. The great, the work is great. The work is large. We're separated on the wall. One far from another. There's a lot of work to get done, but we're separated. We're far from each other. The work is large. One man can't do it. One person can't do it. One auxiliary can't do it. One organization can't do it. The work is great and is large, but we're separated one from the other, and we're far from each other. The gates are down, the, ga the walls are down, and the gates are burned with fire. 21. Uh, now in what place thereof shall you hear the sound of the trumpet? Resort ye thither to us. Our God shall fight for us. Our God shall fight for us. I woke up the other day and the, I heard the Spirit of the Lord. It sounded like an uh, autumn voice, like it was outside, but it was inside. And the two words I heard was repair the breach. Repair the breach. I said, all right, if that's what you want me to talk about, Jesus, he said, repair the breach. Now, a breach, the act or result of breaking, break or ruptured, an infraction or violation as of a law, trust, faith, or promise, a gap made in a wall, fortification, line of soldiers, etc., a rift. A servants of friendly relationships, the leap of a, of a whale above the surface of the water, repairing the breach. This shouldn't take me too long, so if you give me your undivided attention, we will be going before the rest of the church folks get out. <laughs> we have first dibs. The subject matter is repairing the breach. Yes. The Spirit of God literally spoke this. And the context is coming from as I go in and out of different circles of, of Christians and ministries and looking around at church life and listening and working with people up close, there's a breach. Now, to contextualize the text, the name um, Isaiah, I mean, Nehemiah means God comforts. That's what his name means. Now, this particular book is really connected to Ezra. Historians say Ezra and Nehemiah was two books, Ezra and Ezra two but it's Nehemiah, the memoirs of Nehemiah or the sayings of Nehemiah in the month of Cheslu. The month of Cheslu is our latter November and December. It's a time recorded when Nehemiah is written down, recorded what Nehemiah said 
and did. It's the memoirs of Nehemiah. This is a period where the children of Israel had gone back probably almost roughly around 100 years earlier to Jerusalem. And Nebuchadnezzar had torn the city down and broken the walls and burned the gates. And when Ezra and Zerubbabel took the first group from Babylon back to Jerusalem, Ezra is a book that deals with the children of Israel or God's people building their house and building the temple and the altar, building their homes and the church or the temple and the altar. But the walls were down and the gates were burned with fire. Nehemiah was down in Persia. He was a cupbearer. And before the king eat or drink, he would taste it. So if someone trying to poison the king, he would taste it first. Nehemiah lived in the lap of luxury. His brother came to see him and some more men from Jerusalem. Yeah. Nehemiah said, hey guys, how are the people doing? They said, oh, they're not doing good. They have great affliction. Yeah. They have, uh, the walls are down and the gates are burned. God pricked this man's heart. And from that point on, he began to pray. Nehemiah chapter 1 would tell you, and they use it in business settings, even when I was in secular uh, society and in the business world, they even, we used Nehemiah about leadership. Nehemiah, heart was pricked, and he was willing to give up all of the pleasure that he had there in Persia to go help his people. The king said, Nehemiah, why are you looking sad? He said, oh, king, you know, I, I need you to have favor upon me and I need to go see my people. And he told him what the situation was. He said, but I need provision. I need material. I need things to get stuff done. Nehemiah, uh, Artaxerxes wrote him a letter and he was able to go through the different providence back to Jerusalem, get timber and get wood. He had the favor. But if you read Nehemiah chapter 1, which I don't have time today, but for your perusal, he prayed and he wept. That's important. He cried over the matter. And he told God, he said, Lord, we have sinned. He didn't say they did. He said we did. And his prayer was so inclusive. And he was asking God to forgive him and to give him favor. And God gave him favor, and when he came and toured the land riding on his horse, he didn't tell anybody what he was intending to do. Sometimes we tell the vision too fast. Sometimes you tell your girlfriend all your business, they, they may be praying against it, or may be working against it. Sometimes you need to hold things close to the vest, and you don't need to tell everything. You could tell something too soon. And it can get aborted or it can be fought. Yeah. Nehemiah kept it in his heart what he was going to do. Ezra deals with the children of Israel building their homes and building the temple and the altar. The book of Nehemiah now comes to deal with the wall around Jerusalem. And the enemy, they had three, Samballat, Tobiah, and Grissom. These guys were Persian governors in that region. They were principalities. They were strongholds. They were territorial spirits. And they didn't want the children of Israel to build the walls. Because if you build the wall, you can't violate the people anytime you get ready. We have protection. Wall brings security. Walls brings protection. But what we also have built walls within ourselves among each other. See, we're not building a wall now and we're not in Jerusalem. But we are the people of God. And sometimes we build walls 
That we can't reach out and be with our brothers and sisters. And sometimes we, we build walls and we wonder why am I so lonely? We wonder why don't nobody love me and why am I out here by myself? Because you built a wall. And the, and, and the wall of sometimes is torn down in on other respect through infractions, through disagreements, through hurt, through a violation. That's what the breach is. And if you try to build a wall and the foundation is not good, the wall will be built, but it can buckle. It can have a crack in it. It won't be solid. So many Christians are trying to go on and build their life with God, but it's not solid. What I heard the Spirit of the Lord says, you have to go back and mend, mend, mend some fences. Uh huh. The stuff you fell out with somebody over, you got to go back and ask for forgiveness. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, we got 25 more minutes. You see, there are a lot of people that don't own their part in the fallout. The Spirit of the Lord is saying to you today, you got to own your part. Let me just skip all of the middle stuff and jump down. <laughs> you see, Sam Ballad Tobiah, these spirits, would, would, would laugh at you. Oh, and here's what the enemy likes to do. You need to take note. He likes to mock the church, mock the saints. Even if a fox run up on it, it's going to fall. What do you think you're doing? You little Jews, you go, what are you talking about God's going to do something for you? God? And the devil likes to mock the saints. He likes to, he likes to shame base them. He likes to guilt ride them. He likes them to hold their head down in shame. And so what he does is he'll let these infractions come. And whether it's family members, whether it's church members, whether it's employees, whether it's folk at the supermarket, you as a child of God have to repair the breach. It's not okay for you to walk around and don't get it straight. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. There's a lot of walls been torn down. The walls are broken down and the gates are burned. And the devil can attack us anytime. I mean, just wake up, he jump on you, you're depressed. Nobody bothers. Why is the devil fighting you so? It's because the walls are down and the gates are burned with fire. But you got to rebuild the wall. And the devil is sitting there saying, ha ha, look at you, you'll never make it. You'll never come out of it. You will never be anything. Look at what you lost. Look at you. Nobody likes you. But the scripture said, and God will fight for us. I wish I had somebody to help me here. But you must understand that to repair the breach, you can't have no fallout as a Christian. And expect to build and have a fortified You got to have repentance, humility. You got to, let me just give you, can I give you like three more texts and then we're going to close? That's Old Testament. And sometimes the Old Testament theologians would try to write us off because we're under grace. Let me bring you over there what Jesus was saying. Matthew chapter number six. Thank God for Jesus. Matthew six, because you see, I can scream all day and rebuke the devil and shake the mic and do all that. The devil said, I'm looking at you and said, no, you have an infraction against you. No, you don't have authority to rebuke me because you ain't right. You can't make me go nowhere because you ain't did what God told you to do. Look what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. Matthew 6 and 12. And forgive us our debts as part of the model prayer. As we forgive our debtors. I heard a man use an analogy the other day on the radio. He said there was a man in New York City behind a big truck that had 100 pounds of cow manure. And he says the fence broke and the man 
in the car, had his windows down, and all of the manure came into his car. He said, sometimes you're the one dumping the manure, and other times you're the one cleaning it all up. Forgive us of our debts, we hurt somebody, and forgive us of our debtors, those that have hurt us. You got to let it go, you got to release it and let it go. Amen, come on shout, I'm letting it go, I'm letting it go. That's the model prayer that Jesus prayed. Verse number 14 of that same chapter. If you forgive men of their trespasses, your heavenly father will forgive you. But if you don't, you still got something, but God got something against you. Look at verse number 15. Come on here. You, you. But if you make it up in your little mind that you're not going to forgive men their trespasses because what they did was just wrong, then neither will your father forgive you of all the stuff you did. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what you call the law of deduction in theology. Let's deduce. If I'm not forgiven of my sin, I can't go to heaven. Because sin ain't going to heaven. Unconfessed sin is not going. So if God hasn't forgiven me of my sin, then that's a chance I may not go to heaven. No, I want to go to heaven, so I have to forgive men so I can go to heaven. Come on, give God a great hand. Oh, if that's not plain enough, let's go to Matthew chapter 18, verse 21, and just allow me to read through the text. I'm almost done. I'm looking at the clock. I, you'll be out of here at 1230. Some folks like to blame me. Y'all be in church to two o'clock. I said, we wasn't in church to two o'clock. They was hanging around to two. Oh, so you just got to highlight stuff because folk, you know. Let's read class. Matthew 18, 21. I want you to follow the narrative. I want you to look at, get in the story. Put yourself there and look at it. Watch how Jesus handled the situation. I'm talking about uh, rebuilding uh, 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 the breaches. Then came Peter, the apostle, the man of God. Lord, how often shall I forgive Shall my brother sin against me? And I asked, I had to forgive him. Jesus says, seven times seven? Well, how many times is that? As many times as they need it, that's what that means. 22. Jesus said unto him, I say unto thee. Peter tried to be smart, right? Until seven times, but until 70 times seven. No, go further, Peter. You did seven times. No, 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 no. Seventy times seven. What it's really saying, saints, is how many times they need it. Forgive them. Twenty-three. This is Jesus. I didn't say it. Don't talk about that passage. Jacob. No, I didn't say a thing. I wouldn't have written it like that. I would have said if they hit you one time, write them off. But I'm not Jesus. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king. What? Which would take an account of his servants. So God is going to call us unto account. 24. And when he had begun to reckon one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Are you following the text? All right, 25. Let's read, students. But for as much as he had not to pay, he didn't have the money to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had so payment can be made. You're following the text? 26, watch what the man did. The servant therefore fell down and he went into worship and said, Lord, have patient with me. And if you have patience, as I worship you, I'll give you pay of y'all. Watch it. So he's asking the Lord to have patience because he owed him something. And the Lord said, your wife finna be sold, your kids finna be sold, everything until you pay me. He said, but have patience. Watch, 27. Watch the text. Then the Lord said to that servant, was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave that man 
his debt. You watch the text? He owed the man. He didn't have the money. He fell down in worship. Ask him to have mercy. He's going to pay him all. The man said, I forgive you. You don't have to pay me. I release you of the debt. That same man that did all that worshiping, all that tongue speaking, all of that ringing and quaking, that same man. 28. Let's read the text. But the same servant, see there, went out, found one of his fellow servants, one of his brothers, which owed him about a hundred pence, you know, a tenth of what he owed. He laid hands on him, grabbed, took him by the throat. Are you seeing the picture? Saying, pay me what you owe me. Now he just got released. He just worshiped. God forgave him. He runs out and find a brother owed him a little less and grabbed him by the throat and said, give me what you owe me. 29. 29. And his fellow servant watched the fellow servant. He fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, have patience with me. And I'm going to pay y'all same thing he did. You come in here talking about how God forgave you of all your sin, but you don't want to forgive somebody. You talking about how he's a wonderful God in your life. Are you wonderful in somebody's life? You talk about how much he loved you. Who do you love? You talk about how he set you free. Who you setting free? Y'all ain't saying nothing in the house. I asked the Lord to help me to contextualize and have proper hermeneutics and exegesis of the text. Read the Bible. 30. And he would not, like some of us, I'm not going to do it. But you shouting about how you saved and God forgave you, but I ain't forgiving them. The walls are down and the gates are burned with fire. Walls is to protect you from the enemy, but the walls are down and the gates are burned with fire. But God will fight for us if we repair the breach. He would not, but he went, cast that poor man into prison till he pay that hundred pennies. Watch Jesus, 31. We're almost done. So when his fellows, the other brethren saw this, what's going on and what was done, they were so sorry. You see, when saints see you mistreating each other, it hurts the body. When they see you being callous with one another, it hurts the body. They were sorry, very sorry, and came and told the Lord, Lord, you forgave them of that debt. You released them. They didn't even have to pay it, and you was good. That same man that was jumping and shouting and giving God praise went and found somebody else. And Lord, you know what happened? What? The man fell down and begged for patience just like he asked you, but he had him thrown in prison, Lord. That hurt me to my heart. And the Bible says they were very sorry and came and told their Lord all that was done. 32, read the Bible. Oh, help me, Jesus. Then his Lord, after that, he had called that man and said unto him, Oh, thou wicked sir. I don't want the Lord to be looking at me like that. I'm talking about blessed in the city, blessed in the city. And the Lord said, you're wicked. I'm blessed coming and I'm blessed. The Lord said, but you're wicked. Why am I wicked, Lord? You won't forgive your brother. So the walls are down and the gates are burned with fire. And Sam Bell and the Tobiah is mocking the church. Then his Lord said, after he had called him and said unto him, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee 
all that debt, all your prostituting and all your smoking reefer and all your getting drunk, all of your stealing, the big, the big, the big sentence you're supposed to spend 200 years in prison. I had them to redrop that. I, yo, heal your body. I did all that for you. Gave you your green card, till your body told you to run on. I turned things around, brought your children back in. I did all of that for you. Oh, I bless you when you shouldn't have been blessed. I did it, not because you were holy, not because you was right, but because I'm merciful. Help me, Holy Spirit. All oh, that wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because you asked me to, and I'm a good God. Help me, Jesus. 32, 33, read. Shouldest thou also have compassion on your brother, even as I have had pity? On you, church don't want to hear that, but I'm going to sound the alarm. I don't care if you like it or don't like it. You're not going nowhere with full of hate and all of the breaches down, and you don't go back and tell people I'm sorry and make it right, and you don't go back and confess to that brother or to that sister, I violated you and I'm sorry. Who should stand in thy holy hill? Who shall stand in thy holy hill? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Woo! Lord, help me here. Somebody give him a little praise right there. Come on, I need to hear you praise him a little more. Oh! Hey! Hey! Let me finish. I got a few more minutes. God is expecting me to forgive everybody because I realize that he forgave me of my sin. He don't want me to hold nothing up because the walls will be down and the gates will be burned. But the devil can attack me because I have torn down the wall and created a breach. You causing a breach with your unforgiveness. A breach with your haughtiness. You're really throwing a finger to God and said, I'm not going to do nothing. Let me finish. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant? Even as I had pity on thee, 34, come on. And his Lord was happy with him, wroth, and delivered him to the tormentor. Could this be why some of us are being tormented and fighting demonic forces and always going through? Because the walls are down and the gates are burned with fire. And Sam Ballard and Tobiah said, even if they send a praise up, even if a little rain come, it's going to tear down. They'll be depressed before night come. But God is going to fight for us. <laughs> Throw him there to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due. That's a lot. 35. So likewise, shall my heavenly father do also unto uh-huh if you from your not from your mouth if you forgive you don't even bring it up you forgive you ain't at six months later you throwing it you can hear little hints of it you ain't forgave out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak hallelujah to God come on let's get right and go home You got to do this from your heart. You can't do this from your lips, from your throat, from your head. It's got to come from your heart. 
You got to love your brother and sister from your heart. You can't have no funny thing running up to you and you running out the church and you don't want to speak and you ain't, you trying to avoid folk. You, that ain't God. The walls are down and the gates are burned with fire. And Sam Ballin and Tobiah said, even if a fox run upon it, even they build a prayer life, the devil, I do something and confuse them and they'll be mad. They won't pray no more. He wants to mock you. Stop the momentum of the church. Take the power out of the church. Keep folks scalp. He says, the work is great and the work is large, but we're separated far from each other when we should be working together for the kingdom of God. So likewise shall your heavenly father do also unto you if you from your hearts forgive not every one his brother, not the ones you like. Not the ones that is easy. Everybody that trespassed or created a breach let them go. Amen. Now, I have a few things to the Holy Spirit gave me that may be a blessing to you. Who knows? Forgiveness heals wounds. It heals scars. You don't have to bleed over everybody. You don't have to bleed over the next relationship. You don't have to bleed over the next job. Just, it, he it stops the hemorrhaging. Forgiveness heals. It brings freedom. It brings liberty. Forgiveness brings blessings. It causes the river of God to flow. Whew. Spring up a well. I got a river of life flowing out of me. It makes the lame to walk. It makes the blind to see. I got a river of life flowing out. But it's like beavers has stopped the river. And what stops the river is unforgiveness. Resentment. Bitterness. Hatred. Uh, can't stand. Whatever category you want to put that in dislike it's like beavers stopping the river so it's not flowing Jesus said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water but can't no living come out. everything coming out of there is contaminated it's poison bitter water you remember the children of Israel said we can't drink this water it's bitter and Moses had to put a tree there to sweeten the waters of Myra. Saints, God says unforgiveness and releasing it releases and causes the flow of God to flow in your life, the Spirit of God. It causes blessings to come and overtake you. Blessings were just, you just walking down the street and the blessing will jump out and hit you. The kind of blessings you wasn't looking for will come to you. Stuff you don't need, there it is. God just said, you know, I just want to do something for you today. Bang, and hit you with a blessing. I'm here to tell you, when you do that and the devil don't want you to walk in the blessings of God, he wants you to stay so you'll get mad at God, think the Bible doesn't work, and none of this stuff is true because nothing is flowing in your life, but you refuse to own your position and what you did and humble yourself and say, I'm ready to repair the breach. I'm ready to build the wall. I'm ready for God to fight for us. Forgiveness gives you power over the enemy. It releases you from shame, from guilt. It releases you from fear when you experience the forgiveness of God. Unforgiveness is not for the other person, my brother and my sister, ladies and gentlemen. Unforgiveness is for you. 
Unforgiveness is killing you. It ain't killing the folk you mad at. They out eating cake and ice cream. <laughs> they drinking Kool-Aid. Why you mad, it's killing you. Why you mad, it's taking your joy. Why you mad, you not even enjoying the summer. It's almost over and you spend the summer upset. But they have laid out and got tanned and went to the beach and did everything and you sitting around mad at them. Unforgiveness is hurting you and it's not hurting the folks you're mad. So it's for you to let it go so you can be healed, so you can be whole, so you can experience God's best. I wish I had somebody to help me here. I don't care if you draw back. I don't care if you hold back. You can't sit on this. I got God on my side. God told me to tell you. But it hurt. He ain't asked you, did it hurt? It's hard. He didn't even ask you whether it's hard. He said, do it if you want to be blessed. I forgave you of all your stuff. It hurt for me to go on the cross. It hurt for me for them to beat me. But I did it looking at the joy that was set before me. I saw you whole. I saw you. It's never the Father's will for you to be hurting and bleeding and never being healed and never being. That is not God's will. That's the devil. He wants you to be in the church but not free. In the church but not liberated. In the church but not made whole. But the devil is a liar. His cousin is a liar. His brother is a liar. His mama is a liar. His stepchildren are liars. The whole family lies. All right, I'm done. I'm out of time. Stand to your feet. I'm not done. I'm watching the clock. <laughs> 